So what we're going to do today is actually put a plasmid into E. coli. So uh, E. coli is a type of bacteria. It, it grows really quickly. So that's why we use it in lab. Um, and we want to make sure that the only bacteria we're playing with are the ones we've picked. So that's why we wear gloves so we don't get any of our bacteria in our experiments. And what I have is basically ethanol, uh, like hand sanitizer, but just the alcohol part. And I wipe my hands and my bench first. Uh, pretty standard now that it's 2020 and gestures broadly. Uh, but we keep our benches clean uh, like this. And I just keep the paper towel with me. Let me, and I'm trying not to touch my laptop with my glove, but I'll probably mess up and you can yell at me for that. Let me just adjust the camera so you can actually see the bench. One glove box. Okay, I will hold up things to y'all. Oh, maybe I can sit in the edges here too. Let me make this shorter. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. So now that we've like cleaned the bench, the next thing is we want to make sure the air gets clean. Um, so the way we do that is we put on a flame, like legit a little candle or lighter, um, to kind of force the air to move so that all of the like dust and stuff isn't in the way. So uh, it's kind of hard to see the blue flame, but super cool, small fire. Um, and what we're going to do is put DNA into cells. Um, the DNA we're using has uh, the gene for uh, antibiotic resistance. Basically, they'll be able to survive on this drug called CAM or canamycin. Um, and we do that so that we can kind of either see how that gene does things, or we can use it as a marker for another gene we're interested in. So the next question I'm going to ask is, why do we want to clone things? Uh, Y'all are all geneticists now, so why do you think you'd want to clone anything? Give you like 10, 15 seconds. Awesome. I'm going to close this one because everyone voted and y'all are so smart. Um, you're totally correct. All of the above. Um, so some of the reasons we do study genes are, or why we clone things, is to investigate the functions of new genes. Uh, we have this chunk of DNA and we don't know what it does. It gets really confusing when it's in like its natural either like mouse or a uh, human. So we put it in something really fast. E. coli. Study mutations. Uh, some of y'all specifically <laughs> enjoy this idea. Yeah, so we can't always put a, a mutant gene into a mouse because we don't know what it's going to do or we want to have more like specific understanding. So we'll make that mutation put it in bacteria and see if they can grow. Uh, exploring interactions of uh, groups of genes, totally. If I take away one gene, does this still work? Uh, do the bacteria turn from like uh, a gross yellow color to something cool like green or uh, uh, blue? Um, and there are tons of other reasons, but those are the first ones. Fantastic. So how do we do that? Well, now that everything's all set up, I have uh, a tube here of cells 
I apologize, my handwriting is not that good. And uh, we keep it on ice because they, they like to be cold. And then I have two tubes where I'm gonna put my transformations in. I feel like a beauty YouTuber and this is the product. Um, and then I have this little tiny tube, like super tiny that says plasmid. Oh man, you really can't read that at all. Um, and it's my DNA. It's like this teeny tiny amount. So I can't remember if I set this poll correctly or not. Let's double check. Yes. So we know that we're trying to put this antibiotic resistance gene into these cells. So what we want to see is that when we have this gene, the cells can survive an antibiotic. And when we don't have this gene, the cells can't survive an antibiotic. So what do you think is the best negative control for this experiment? Uh, just raise your hand if you're not familiar with what a negative control is. Uh, if you're not, well, we can go over it super quick. Okay. So we got a couple not sure. Is anyone sure of what a negative control is? If you are, feel free to chime in the chat or unmute yourself, uh, whatever you're comfortable with. cool it's early if you don't want to chime in no problem uh, but I will give you this one a, a negative control is something where we know what the outcome will be if we control it we know what it'll be and negative means we know something won't happen um, so if you wanted to test if coffee helps keep you awake uh, you expect coffee to keep you awake so a negative control is something you expect not to keep you awake, like maybe water or uh, chamomile tea. Uh, so we're just waiting for a couple more people. Um, no biggie if you're not super confident in this one, it's, uh, it's good so far. Two more people, feel free to click on any answer and then I'll close the poll. Last person, you got five seconds. That's okay, the internet is hard and it's also pretty early. I'm just gonna end the poll where it is. So overall, y'all got this perfectly right. Great job. Uh, I also want to congratulate everyone who put, picked either of the first two options. Um, the first answer, transforming a plasmid we know works and has our resistance gene, is a positive control. It's a control. We, we know what the answer will be, and we know something will happen. We know they will grow. Uh, back to that coffee example, it's like giving someone a caffeine pill. You know that caffeine will keep them awake. Plating water only is also a negative control, but it's not the best one. Um, the best is transforming cells with no plasmid. That way we can make sure when we're heating them up and giving them this like really good recovery media, um, basically like Coca-Cola for cells, something they really like to drink or, or grow in. Um, we know we're not like somehow making them resistant just by how we're manipulating them. And I always like to use a negative control. It's like the best science practices, but you'll run into people who don't use them because they're uh, more confident, <laughs> but not great. Wanted, you should um, try to do that. So now that we're done with that, we'll actually do some yeah. pipetting. Um, the, in my opinion, most fun part of science. I'm just gonna re-clean the gloves. 
So I will take our two tubes. Uh, I'll, I'll do everything pipetting in the air so you can see. Uh, we're going to take a really small amount. So it's going to be, I'm just using a micro pipette uh, and just turning it down, like using this to turn it to 4.5. And this is 4.5 microliters, really, really small amount. These are tips that go on the pipette. Put one on, kind of like a little needle, but it's not sharp. Uh, just see, you can cut yourself with it. But now this isn't clean, so I eject it off. Uh, get a new one that is clean. Take some of my cells, pop it open, take up my 4.5 microliters. I'm going to just show you how small of a volume that is. Like, it's only going up to here. And if you do it like that, I don't think you can see, but it's like, oh, it's a teeny tiny drop. This is an empty tube. Even with the bubbles, it only fills up that very bottom bit, way down there. So since we said uh, that's going to be our transformation, cells plus DNA, plasmid, and our negative control is going to be cells without the plasmid. So in that tube, again, we take 4.5 microliters, put in the tube, it's great. Now, even smaller volume, we're going to do 0.5 microliters of DNA. And this one is super. I already have a teeny tiny PCR tube. Again, I, I don't know if you can see this, but so small. I can eject it and it's just like less than a teardrop or a raindrop. We put that in with our cells. And because our cells are really gentle, the way we mix things is flick it like that. Nothing big. Um, so in the perfect science, we'd let this sit on ice for a half hour. Uh, but through the magic of television, we're not going to do that. Um, and then what we do is we heat up these tubes in a water bath. So let me take y'all on a little walk. Okay, come over here. Ooh, walked into a garbage can. We have a, I think that's good. Ah, oh, no, there we go. Water bath, just some water. We put these guys in. Yeah, and I'm sick. Come on. I could never be a vlogger. Uh, you let them sit in that water for about a minute. Um, this is making the cells really hot and making them open up their membrane um, so that the DNA that's stuck on the outside gets pulled into the inside. This is heat chalk. There are other ways to transform bacteria, like um, you can send a little current through them, uh, a little bit of electricity, and that'll make holes in the membrane. Uh, I'm gonna call that a minute for the magic of television. Let me take the tubes back out. We sprint back to our bench. Put these guys oops, back on ice. Uh, the ice helps their, the, the holes we just made close back up. So all the DNA stays inside. And then we're going to add our largest volume so far, 50 microliters. Uh, I'm using a different pipette this time. This one's green. It's also my favorite. Don't know why, just like it. And we add some basically sugar water. Just another tube. Okay. 50 microliters. Add it to each of them. Oh, I can take them out of the ice now. Uh, it's like we gave them the thing they really, really like, and so they're happy. So we want to keep them warm and uh, mixing, that kind of stuff. Beautiful. We have our two tubes with our uh, transformation control 
little, little volumes. And now we'd let that sit for an hour in a 37 degree incubator, uh, a 37 Celsius. I don't know what that is Fahrenheit. Um, if anyone knows, you can put that in the chat because I'm not good at math. Um, yeah, but again, magic of television. We're not gonna wait. Now we take a Petri dish that I've made. These are, it's kind of like jello. It's uh, bouncy and there's antibiotics in these. So uh, if, uh, if the cells aren't resistant, if they don't have the resistance gene on the plasmid, they won't be able to grow on this. But if they do have that gene, they'll be able to grow no, no problem. So pretend we waited that hour. We're gonna take that liquid that we just made, our mixture of cells that have sucked up DNA and that really good sugar water. Suck it all back up in our pipette. And then squirt it onto this plate. Now we wanna move it around. Uh, you can see there's like a little streak where the cells are. And so, very fancy, we have hockey stick. Uh, it's called a cell spreader, but the hockey stick. Uh, clean so it was individually wrapped. And then you just move it all around the plate. Oh, I realize you all can't see that. Move it around the plate. Usually I'd do this flat on the bench, uh, but for, for you guys, I'll, I'll lift it. Uh, and we make sure we spread it out so that all the cells are all the way around. So we'll do that for our transformation, our negative control. We always want to label the plates. So we get a little marker, we'll write on it, TFO transformation one. And then we let this sit in the incubator overnight. But again, uh, magic of television, uh, we're back, it's tomorrow, and we have some results plates. Now, oh, uh, thank you, uh, Ogellis, uh, or Jeannie, I'm not sure who's on the Rocky to you account. Um, that 37 degrees Celsius is about 98 Fahrenheit. So thank you, Odellis. <laughs> um, and yeah, we have a bunch of plates and I'm gonna give y'all polls to help me figure out what is on each plate. So first thing we have is cells that don't, ah, sorry, I almost gave away the answer. We have plates that don't have any antibiotics on them. You'll see I've written minus can. And instead of like that, uh, let me actually lift up my laptop. That'll be easier. One moment, sorry for the challenge. Um, instead of that like, clean, empty plate we had before, I'll, I'll put one out for comparison. We now have plates with cells on them. Okay, this is not working. So empty plate, you can see straight through to my hand. There's nothing in it. I'll take the lid off even. There's nothing on it. And then on these, we have bacteria. You can really see it over my sweater or mask, I guess. So each of those dots is a colony. So that came from a single cell. And then where it's like this big circly chunk, it's a whole lot of cells bunched up. You see you have some different sizes, smaller ones, bigger ones. And here, again, whole bunch at the top, all gunky, some single colonies down there. Um, I'm a vegan, so to me, these plates smell a little bit like pizza because they have yeast in them, uh, but that's neither here nor there. So I'm gonna launch one more poll, or actually I'm gonna redo this one a couple times. Could you tell me what is on like, did this transformation include a plasmid? Um, this is on a plate that doesn't have any antibiotics. 
So this is just what bacteria love to grow on. There's no pressure to have antibiotics or not. I'll give y'all a little bit more time and put this down because my arm is tired. <laughs> gonna give you 10 more seconds. Five, four, three, two, just click on any answer, it doesn't matter. And okay, I'll leave it open while I talk. So feel free to put in the right answer after we go over this. Um, so y'all are about 50-50 split on yes and no, and that's because we can't tell from this plate. You're totally right, everyone who put that, and you're right to have been super confused by this question because you can't tell. Um, these are plates without antibiotics. Bacteria just love to grow on this type of jelly. So since there's no pressure, no need to have the antibiotic resistance gene, you can't tell which of these have plasmid, which of these have the, the gene for antibiotic resistance. Because again, there are no antibiotics on the plates. So great work. That one was super confusing. So if I re, yeah, I relaunch, it'll clear the existing results. Now, don't answer the poll yet. I have to show the plates, but I've got to get my gloves on so I don't get bacteria all over everything. Now I'm going to cover this little green cape I have, reminding me which one has what on it. So you see uh, on this plate, they say plus can, so that's the antibiotics. This one has nothing on it. There's nothing growing. Kind of hard to see, trying to get it on my sweater or something. Yeah, oh, that's a better angle. Nothing growing. This one, look at all that gunk. Got some at the top where it's a whole bunch of them. Some at the bottom that are singles. And I shouldn't have launched the poll. I didn't tell you which plate to do. So I'm just gonna end it and restart it and then hold up one of them and y'all will tell me if there's a uh, plasmid in that transformation. So. This one, where you have a ton of cells. Look at all that stuff. This is a plate that has antibiotics and a ton of cells on it. Almost everyone's in. Uh, we'll do 10 more seconds. Five, four. Okay, again, I'll leave it open while we talk. Y'all are so smart. Yes, there is plasmid in this transformation. Um, yeah, the, the thing that allows antibiotic resistance had to be put in the cells, we transformed it in, now they can live on antibiotics. Super cool, super useful. The one with nothing growing on it, because the antibiotics killed all of the sensitive cells. So yeah, so good. Um, yeah, and, and that's because some of the reason we do the negative control, we do the cells without any DNA, uh, we want to make sure that the cells weren't already resistant to the drug. If, if we grew on both the antibiotic plates, then we got to be like, oh man, is that, did I breathe on that? Is there something else in there? Maybe I forgot to add antibiotics, have done that, 
annoying, but not the end of the world. Um, and for, so I'm a grad student. I am not an artist, please forgive me. But some of the other cool things that we can do with bacteria, we can do science, that's great. Uh, obviously, I think that's great. I've been doing this for a little bit. But we can also make art. I'm not an artist, forgive me. I've used, I took one of those clean plates with nothing on it. And I did some drawings. We have a smiley face, a heart that's supposed to be a flower. Definitely can't tell. This is a tree. I'm not an artist, but I did put grass. We have the sun, the moon, and I accidentally hit the plate when I was trying to draw the sun. So there are super cool, like actual artists who make art with bacteria of different colors. So there are some that are like purple or green and you can, some of the genes you can put into bacteria are like color. Oh, I can turn the flame off now. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> uh, some of the genes you can put in are like different colors. So they can be like fluorescent green or this like cherry color. Um, and people make these like beautiful plates with all different colors and all different art. Um, so you can, you can look that up in your spare time if you're looking for uh, that science and art collaboration that we've all been waiting for. Um, and one of my friends in, in grad school actually runs a competition for science art. Uh, and she had like, I don't know, four or five different types of bacteria that are just naturally different colors. Um, yeah, so that's some of our cloning techniques, how we usually do all of this stuff. Um, and I, I wanted to leave some time for like questions either about what we did today, if there are any polls that you're still not sure about, uh, any like things you've learned about in class. Uh, if you wanna get into like the ethics of genetics, like cool, we can put genes in different things could we do that to people? And then should we do that? Totally happy to discuss that with you guys. Y'all know all about this. Um, or like, if you wanna talk about college, I went to SUNY Stony Brook, uh, super fan of the New York schools, uh, friends that went to CUNY's, Hunter, Brooklyn College, um, how I got into science. Uh, my parents are not doctors or scientists. Uh, my mom was an elementary school lunch aide and uh, my dad does computers for some like office supply company. Um, yeah, feel free to unmute yourself, put things in the chat, take your time. I have all day. <laughs> yeah, Jeannie put in the chat that uh, she went to SUNY Geneseo uh, and came out with only a little bit of student loans. I feel that. I uh, did get a, a scholarship for Stony Brook. So super minimal loans, really happy about that. Don't be shy guys, if you have any questions. I did mention to them a little bit, oh, we have a question from Kaylee about, um, you know, what it is to be a PhD um, candidate and, and researcher. Um, so I'm sure they'd love to hear a little bit about that too. But Kaylee's asking, what's your favorite part about your job? Oh, cool. Um, so I, I really like it when you get to the end of like a really long experiment and you've been working on this for like a couple weeks and then you finally find out something. Uh, and it's most exciting when it's not what you expected. So if I did have cells that grew on that negative control plate, and I'm 100% positive that it's not like contamination, maybe I have a, another negative control somewhere. And then I'm like, are, are these already resistant to antibiotics? Um, and more in like a, a broad sense, um, I'm in a lab that studies a pathogen. So like, it's super cool to know that you're working on something that affects like like one third of the world's population is already infected with TB. And to know that like the things you're doing every day 
could eventually like actually help someone super cool. Um, and I'm just nerdy, so I think it's neat every time I get to see bacteria. Um, anyone else? Uh, I'll give you all a couple seconds before we go like, what is it? Where was the gene you introduced to the bacteria taken from? Uh, Italy? Not sure if I'm saying that right, but thanks. That's an awesome question. Uh, yeah, where did we get this antibiotic resistance gene? This is something that I think is super interesting. So bacteria, when they all live together, they're all kind of mixed. And just like the way um, like lions will eat gazelles, some bacteria express molecules that kill other bacteria. But they have to be safe from that molecule. So they express their own resistance gene. It's like if someone's like, I don't know, shooting arrows at, like you are just spraying arrows out at everyone around you. You want to make sure you and uh, your like population have armor. So you express the arrow, the antibiotic, and the resistance gene, the armor. So we took this from another bacteria. Um, at the like, where we got it, we got that gene from a company. Um, <laughs> we ordered it and they sent us a little piece of DNA in a tube and then we put it into our plasmid with some other like restriction enzymes to cut up DNA and the glue to put it back together, a, a DNA ligase or gluing it together. Um, but yeah, bacteria communicate and they fight and they like tell each other how and where to grow. So we can take a lot of things from them the um, green fluorescent protein I talked about with the art comes from jellyfish. So they, they found this jellyfish that naturally lights up green. And then the scientists figured out which part of the DNA let them do that, took it. And now we put it in like bacteria or tumor cells in cell lines or mice or something so that we can follow these green light up proteins or, or whole cells. When did you um, know that you wanted to pursue science? Was it sometime in high school? Was it during your undergraduate career? Yeah, awesome question. Um, so in high school, I, I knew I really liked science. I had uh, an awesome living environment teacher who like told all of us we could be scientists. I'm like, oh, that's super cool. But like people like me don't become scientists. We're just like normal people. Uh, so I wanted to be um, like uh, an elementary school science teacher because I, I like teaching, uh, but I still wanted to like learn about science. So uh, I went to undergrad. Stony Brook was super good about like getting everyone involved in research. So they're like, if you want to try it, join a lab, see what happens. Um, so I did. Uh, I was like, oh, I'll probably just keep doing teaching things, but might as well see what research is like. And then like I did, I worked in a lab, I got to play with cells and do experiments. I was like, okay, cool, no, I wanna do this. I, I didn't realize like we could be part of science. I thought I could just like watch it happen. Um, so I've always loved science, but I didn't realize I could do it until I got to undergrad, so yeah. Um, Thank you. Of course, yeah. There's a, a question in the chat about how my tuberculosis research is going. Um, it's slow. Uh, TB, like the, the E. coli we were working with before, um, doubles its population every 30 minutes. So it's really fast. TB doubles every 24 hours. So it's really slow. Um, but I'm looking at genes that are super important in drug resistant tuberculosis. So when these cells naturally can't be killed by antibiotics, what in their DNA is letting them survive still? So like, do they have, do they grow really slowly so that the antibiotics can't get in? 
do they have a, like a really thick cell wall so that even if there's like uh, uh, stress inside the cell, nothing from outside gets in. Uh, I still have a lot to do, but I'm, I'm really enjoying it. Uh, super fun. Um, yeah. So someone has asked about advice for those who want to be in, in my place. So yeah, if you want to be a, a science researcher, any capacity, um, I definitely like the first step is to do undergrad, um, probably in a science. If you have the opportunity at that school to do undergraduate research, I super recommend it both from like an application standpoint, like, oh, grad schools love to see undergrad research, but also from like, it's super cool. It, you get to try all these new things and people like grad students like us are super excited to have students come in, uh, young scholars like yourselves who wanna learn things, wanna try stuff out in the lab. And then as far as like advice goes, uh, one, know that you belong here. Uh, you're super smart, you're coming this far, we need you we, we need young smart scientists like you and all of the like different ideas and perspectives you bring from your backgrounds we want that um and that uh not only do you belong here but like just because something goes wrong you don't need to like you can't give up um the the biggest thing is like keeping going even when you get negative results or uh, nothing grows on your plates. So I'm gonna let y'all in on a little secret. Uh, I did transformations of genes that I was interested in because like I have to do it for my research at the same time as I was making these for y'all. Um, and some of them work really nicely. Like I got those little colonies, little dots. And some of them didn't. <laughs> there is nothing growing on this plate. Uh, and there should be things growing on it. So uh, a lot of science is like, oh man, I gotta do that again. Or Ooh, what did I do wrong? Did, did I forget to add something? Or is this just like not working because uh, the science is, is, it's a negative result. Um, so yeah, you just gotta keep going and, and really think about what you're doing. Uh, yeah. And also I'm gonna give y'all my email address at the end so if you want to chat more about like grad school or undergrad or even like high school things uh i'm happy to talk about all this kind of stuff uh, and i could do it for a really long time someone asked about any other cool science art ideas um so since i'm a, a microbiologist I'm, I'm super partial to all of the different like uh micro painting with bacteria things but there are a lot of like small groups that um so so i mentioned that i'm i'm vegan right so there is a whole company out in california of course it's california making vegan cheese by having e coli make the milk protein so they they cloned that whey gene from cow's milk into E. coli and they produce it like that. So you could have legit vegan cow's milk. Uh, you don't have to worry about like the gross vegan cheese problem where like it doesn't melt or it doesn't taste like cheese. It's fully vegan, cruelty-free cow's milk. Same with like in vitro meats. Like, oh, what if we could make a hamburger in a Petri dish? I would eat that. Uh, I'm not vegan because I don't like the way hamburgers taste. They're very good. <laughs> uh, as far as art goes, there are people who make like bioluminescent plants. So plants that grow different colors uh, and they have all these cool like little miniature gardens with different light up leaves. Um, I'm not super familiar of uh, other ones, but I think if you like Googled biology art or, or something like that, you could find really cool things. There's this um, 
international genetically engineered machine competition, iGEM, that has high schoolers and undergrads and grad students do projects. And there's a whole set of like tracks for people who just want to make art with biology. So they have some yeah. Oh, Jeannie, you wanted to yeah. say something? Yeah, I, I'll share that um, the American Society for Microbiology has uh, an art competition every year. And if anybody has ever done Urban Barcode or now Biobus, um, Christine Maritzi, if anybody knows her, she wins it all the time. She draws <laughs> New York City skylines in different fluorescent colors, like on big giant dishes of agar. It's really cool. You should check it out. Um, and I think there's another company called Ginkgo Bioworks. It's a Massachusetts based startup that basically genetically engineers as whatever they can. Like, oh, you know, if you go to like a candle store or, you know, someone you know is like selling candles and those candles smell like rose, a lot of times that rose um, odor come, it's made through genetically engineered uh, microbes. Um, they just pump it out and then these companies buy these odors and pop it into their lotions and their candles. Um, it's one of the ways that we get that smelliness, I suppose, of, of, our, of our common products. Thank you. I totally didn't know that. <laughs> It's fun. I love I love thinking about the applications of genetic engineering. I feel like I feel like you can basically dream up anything and then make anything. It's so cool, you know. It's a really great point too um, that along those lines, you know, the the point that you're making, Miss Eckert, of exploring new cruelty free. Um, ways to develop not only f food products, but, you know, things that you're bringing up to, like, you know, other types of products that we use. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, anything else? Well, I want to just take an opportunity to you know, thank um, you, Miss Eckerd. Um, we really appreciate it. If everyone wants to unmute and quickly give her some snaps of appreciation. <laughs> um, and thank you, geneticists, for your active participation. I know that you all got a lot out of this, and hopefully, you've been inspired. Um, I know um, several of you are future. Um, scientists and researchers, and uh, we look forward to hearing about your wonderful um, pathways and discoveries in the future. I want to thank um, Dr. Walwyn Pollard, who helped make this uh, possible, and Dr. Um, Garbarino, um, who is the director of Rock EDU Science Outreach. Wonderful to see you again. I know it's been a while know, since I've been in your sense. lab, but it's lovely to see you again and thank you so much for continuing to allow UHHS students to oh, learn from you all. We really appreciate you all. Pleasure. We love thank having you. your students with us. We love having you with us. Um, oh, thank you. Thank you. Your students and yeah. Yeah. Thank you for letting me share this with you. Uh, Y'all were awesome. You're super smart and yeah. Um, uh, do you have my email or do you, should I pop it in the chat? What's best for everybody? Um, you can pop it in the chat and then I'll also send. Yeah. Awesome. And I'll thank post you. it on their classroom page too. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. We hope that you'll, you'll, you'll keep in touch with us. We have a lot of things going. And one thing I want to plug is, um, I don't know if you're familiar with the Lab Jumpstart program but we would love for any student here who might be interested in get like building research skills and then doing research during the summer. So you would build research skills in the fall, in the spring, and then up in like an after school session. And then you would build your, you would it, like apply this to actually, we would mail you a bunch of stuff and you could do potential like microbiology experiments or even coding style of experiments. Uh, in the summer under mentorship of scientists in a program called Lab Jumpstart. And um, you also get a stipend so that you don't have to choose between, like if working during the summer is your shtick. I know I always work during the summer. I would ask my parents if I could like go to um, 
like they had Columbia had a microbiology program for high school students. And I really wanted to go to that. And my parents were like, no, you have to work, you know, and the Columbia program had tuition associated with it. And my parents were like, no way. So we don't want to ever put any kid in that position where you want to do a program like this, but you need to also work. Um, maybe that's me like pushing <laughs> my own experiences on people. But um, so yeah, we offer a really nice generous stipend for it. So I definitely encourage um, to you uh, to to do that. And somebody just said they like my guitar. It's not, I wish I was that cool. I do this on purpose, but it's my husband's. <laughs> so, but I look cool, right? You are cool. Thank and you. We certainly have some really strong candidates in this class. Um, they yeah. all received an email from me when you all put it out to us, but I'll make sure to um, promote that again. Yes, um, because I think for, for many students, it's just an issue of like self confidence and like, you know, would I be able to do this? You. Absolutely. Absolutely. You yeah. feel that. I feel you so hard. I, I understand where you're coming from. Um, you know, I do not come from. My, my mom has, is a high school dropout. Uh, I'm a product of a teenage pregnancy and my dad did not go to college ever. Um, they didn't understand when I was like, you know, I got a 4.0 one semester and they were just like, that seems like a low number, you know? <laughs> you know? So like, I, I, you know, it's, I had to do, I had to navigate this whole place by myself. And that's exactly why we built the programs that we built. It's for you to not have to go through that BS that I had to go through of like sinking or swimming. Like that's not okay. People should be supporting each other. And these programs are designed specifically to make sure that even if you feel not confident about yourself and none of us feel confident about ourselves like 100% of the time. So that's totally normal, right? But like, we want to build you up. I believe in building people who then build good science. But if you don't have good people, then you're gonna have crappy science, right? So I believe in people and I believe in science and together that's what the Lab Jump, Jumpstart program represents. So I hope you'll consider it. Um, we, we are, we love our students. We keep in touch with our students and exactly Odellis wrote it's, uh, we want you to be successful in whatever path and just have a, an appreciation for science. You don't have to like be a scientist. We just, you know, know how it works. I mean, how, how amazing is it to have scientific literacy in an age that we're in right now, when we're going through Moderna just came out with like a vaccine um you know efficacy studies pfizer came out with vaccine efficacy studies you want to you know you want to be able to navigate this type of information that's like that's that's so impactful for our lives that's our goal we just want you to be cool with that stuff you can go and do whatever you have, to have an interest in science so we're looking for students who you know after after this presentation or some class that you've taken um, you became super interested in finding out a little bit more or wanted to do something more hands-on in terms of getting to know, you know, getting a feel for what science is, science is really like. <clears throat> yeah, absolutely. So, so I'll, I'll put out that information to them Thank again. Um, I know I have to let them go in a couple of minutes. They have a fourth period class, but we really appreciate you all and we love y'all. We love science and <laughs> we wish you all um, a wonderful um, rest of the fall and winter. We'll stay in touch for sure. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks Bye, everyone. Bye, Have a great everyone. day. Bye. Thank you, Ms. Eckerd.